If you're an unreasonably reasonable person, pick up a Radical Centrist t-shirt at some black guy's Teespring store. Link's in the description below. Supreme Victory! Hey, what's going on everyone? Derek Blackman here. Welcome back. And today, we're going to be focusing on the New York Times. As you guys know, they write a lot of ridiculous articles, such as like the one uh, with the guy saying that, can his children be friends with white people? I mentioned it in one of my stupid shit on Twitter videos. But this one, I would say is a little bit more ridiculous opinion. If you let boys be boys, they will murder their fathers and sleep with their mothers. And the piece itself is called The Unexamined Brutality of the Male Libido, with a picture of Harvey Weinstein, of course, so you already know where this is going. And this is written by a manly man. <laughs> Actually, it's written by a guy that you would consider nowadays uh, a cuck, you know, you in the pejorative sense. Although I wouldn't be a surprise if he actually let somebody fuck his wife or something like that. But that's besides the point. You know, he's a typical Canadian. And uh, <laughs> maybe that's bad to say, too, because I know a lot of great Canadians there. But the type of, you know, the type of guys that are happy that Justin Trudeau is running their country. But um, he's wrote such books called The Unmade Bed, The Messy Truth About Men and Women in the 21st Century. It pretty much challenges gender roles and talks about mansplaining and a lot of other different things and a lot of feminist talking points. And I think that that book is really just him kind of trying to come with terms and really trying to reinforce like the decisions that he's made because he kind of threw away his career uh, so his wife can pursue her dream career. You know, things that a lot of times it's reversed. Um, but, you know, it might be noble, but sometimes it challenges your masculinity. So he kind of has to stick up for this type of stuff. So it's no wonder that he would write an article like this. I haven't even gotten into it, but you guys, you guys, you guys know where this is going. Now, I'm not going to read the entire thing because I don't want you guys to die, but I'm going to just stick it to the main points and just show you where this guy's mind is and how trash this article truly is. After weeks of continuously unfolding abuse scandals, men have become quite literally unbelievable. What any given man might say about gender politics and how he treats women are separate and unrelated phenomena. Liberal or conservative, feminist or chauvinist, woke or benighted, young or old, found on Fox News or in the New Republic, a man's stated opinions have next to no relationship to behavior. I feel a downward stroke being painted across the ilk of man. Through sheer bulk, the string of revelations about men from Bill Cosby to Roger Ailes to Harvey Weinstein to Louis C.K. to Al Franken and this week Charlie Rose and John Lasseter have forced men to confront what um, we hate to think about most, the nature of men in general. You know, it's funny, all those guys that were mentioned have actually a few things in common. They're uh, either rich, powerful, influential, and they abuse said power. You know, it's not just some bloke on the street. You know, you're focusing on these people that have influence and then they use that influence over women. So, I mean, it's kind of bad that you're just painting this broad brush. You know, all men are fucking evil because some of these powerful ones, some of these influential ones are, are, are being dickheads. And uh, you know, it's pretty bad because you know you can't do that to women, right? We can't, we can't paint a broad brush over all women because maybe a few bad ones. You, you know, we, we don't like to do that in any sense. But here's this guy, you know, just selling out men. You know, even though he's a man himself, says a lot about him. This time, the accusations aren't against some freak geography teacher, some frat running amok in a southern college town. They're against men of all different varieties in different industries with different sensibilities bound together solely by the grotesquerie of their sexuality. I mean, I've kind of already said that they're men with status and influence, so this is bullshit. I think your point would have been much better if it was some type of guy that was just in uh, or frats going on or or a geography teacher or something like that showing you that these are different people, people that don't they don't really give a shit about. A lot of isolated incidents is a lot of horrible people taking advantage of kids and whatnot. But you're talking about people that are high status and they're abusing their power. You know, I, I think you're really off the mark here. Like, really off the mark. Men arrive at this moment of reckoning woefully unprepared. Most are shocked by the reality of women's lived experience. Almost all are uninterested or unwilling to grapple with the problem at the heart of all of this. The often ugly and dangerous nature of the male libido. <laughs> you know, this climate of sexual predators and a lot of things that have been going on 
that are uh, rightfully being exposed. I can't just 100% blame on men. And some women might be like, Gasp, what are you trying to say? Well, what I'm trying to say is if you look at how a lot of our things work, especially in within Hollywood, you look at, say, something like literature, like uh, romance novels, and you look at uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, you look at a lot of uh, fantasies that women will tell you about. And I'm talking about women that I know personally that have said they would love to be you know, treated like shit, or they liked being treated like shit, or they would like to be sexually abused, and they have, you know, rape fantasies, and all this stuff, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of people have a lot of weird stuff like that, and it went very mainstream, like we talked about, Hollywood, Fifty Shades of Grey, there's a lot of shit that give men the idea that women would want this type of stuff, or there's men in influential places thinking that I can be like this guy. And it's not a complete excuse, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying it's not just the men's fault. It's just showing you that there's women that kind of dig that shit, and not all women dig that shit, obviously. I don't dig any of that stuff. I don't really... I've never tried to abuse any type of status or anything I have. I've never used my YouTube channel and be like, hey, hey, girl, you want to you wanna be famous? You want to be internet famous? All you got to do is give me a little handy, and then I'll... <laughs> But on a serious note, I think it's just completely unfair to just completely blame this on the male libido and not examine the female libido whatsoever. Like as if females are just 100% innocent in everything. They have their Puritans, their prudes, and they have absolutely nothing to contribute in this type of culture and stuff that's gone on. I think it's just untrue. I think there's a lot of nuance that this guy is missing. <laughs> I mean, obviously. And for the record, I'm not trying to hate on people that like Fifty Shades of Grey or stuff like that. You know, there's nothing wrong with getting a little bit rough from time to time. Rough sex, make it hurt. Oh, oh, and it just gets much, much crazier from here. For most of history, we've taken for granted the implicit brutality of male sexuality. In 1976, the radical feminist and pornography opponent, Andrea Dworkin, said that the only sex between a man and a woman that could be undertaken without violence was sex with a flaccid penis. Why is this in here? Like, do, do you agree with this or something? I mean, dude, Steven, you have a child. I mean, how, how many times did you sexually assault your wife to conceive your child? I mean, according to her, it must have been a lot. I think that men will have to give up their precious erections, she wrote. In the third century AD, it is widely believed the great Catholic theologian Origen, or however the fuck you say his name, working on roughly the same principle, castrated himself. <laughs> Dude, seriously, why put this in here? Why use the mad ravings of a sex-negative feminist who says porn is a civil rights violation against women? Surely you can find someone much better to support your argument than that sad sack of pus. Fear of the male libido has been subject of myth and of fairy tale from the beginning of literature. What else were the stories of Little Red Riding Hood or Blue Beard's Castle about? A vampire is an ancient and powerful man with an insatiable hunger for young flesh. Werewolves are men who regularly lose control of their bestial nature. Get the point? <laughs> Uh, now we're using fairy tales as an argument. We're using fairy tales fictional shit to support your argument. And it's such a bad one too because you talk about all these things, mythical fairy, fairy tales and all these monsters. And it's like, I could do the exact same thing for women. All the tales of scary, spooky type of women, like like witches, like succubi, like, uh, like gorgons that if you look at them, that you turn to stone, like sirens that they draw you in with their, with their beautiful, like, you know, soothing voices and then they devour how are you? All these terrible women that do stuff, especially the sucky by they steal your soul, man. I can do the same thing. What is your fucking point? This this is this is garbage. This is so bad. <laughs> this is so bad. How the fuck is this guy? This guy's a professor, or at least he was. Jesus. Liberalism has tended to confront gender problems from a technocratic point of view. Improved systems, improved laws, better health. That approach has resulted in plenty of triumphs, but there remains no cure for human desire. It isn't actually about sex, it's about power. I read in The Guardian the other day. How naive must you be to not understand that sex itself is about power every bit as much as it's about pleasure? That is absolutely insane. That is more radical feminist dogma. Sounds like something that Andrea Dworkin would say. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if she actually said something just like that. There's an obvious strong case and there's evidence that when it comes to sexual assault, it's, it's linked to power. 
because you know when you think about sex you can get sex so many different ways you can pay for it or whatever whatnot and then doing something one of the most heinous heinous crimes and doing something that you know that's just really uh, you, you got to have absolutely no empathy you got to be somewhat psychotic to really really sexually assault just straight up rape somebody so there's definitely a, a power dynamic going on there and i'm not like an expert in that field but i think that's i think that's pretty obvious uh for the most part and, and if i'm wrong you know please correct me but as far as it just goes with regular sex people just having sex with each other just banging i mean what the hell man how does that have anything to do with power dude i've you know had my fair share of sex i've never at once felt empowered or felt like oh i'm a fucking powerful man because i just banged this chick it never once in my life ever crept through my mind dude it's not about that it's just about having a good time it's just about feeling good because sex feels great dude all i want to do is like be my l on some t's get a sandwich and play some fucking dark souls dude that has nothing to do with power that's just a good fucking evening Acknowledging the brutality of the male libido is not, of course, some kind of excuse. Sigmund Freud recognized the, I'm assuming that's ID, I, I know it should be in caps, and knew it as a chaos, a cauldron full of seething excitations. But the point of Freud was not that boys will be boys, rather the opposite. The idea of the Oedipus complex contained an implicit case for the requirement of strenuous repression. If you let boys be boys, they will murder their fathers and sleep with their mothers. This is just another shitty attempt to paint men as pieces of shit. And uh, why it's a really bad example, because there is a female counterpart called the Electra Complex, where basically girls are in competition with their mothers to win the affection of their fathers. So essentially what you can do is say that if you let girls be girls, they're going to kill their mothers and sleep with their fathers. Seriously, Steven, fuck you, man. This is absolute garbage, because I'm a man, and I know I'm not a scumbag piece of shit. I have no intention or never had any intent on abusing women. Or if I if I become like any bigger than I am now, have any intent on trying to abuse my power to try to sleep with women or do whatever. I don't have any of that drive in me, man. I don't. I genuinely don't. I mean, I think back to all the women that I've interacted with, all the women that I've been with, past relationships and whatnot. And I can genuinely say, I, I, I with confidence, that I have like maybe one complaint, one complaint of like, say, a girl that doesn't like me anymore, but everybody else, man, everyone else say that, hey, this is a genuine guy, and I fucking hate talking about myself, dude, I really do, I don't like to toot my own horn or anything like that, but I'm just trying to drive home a point that, no, not inherently men are just all fucking terrible, we're just, oh, it's just toxic masculinity, as as a lot of um feminists would call it, you know, I, I think that there are some men that obviously have toxic values they they or I, I wouldn't even call it values right just some toxic traits because maybe they weren't raised right maybe they're raised in an environment where they didn't give a fuck about you know common courtesy or common etiquette uh personal hygiene all these different things because you'll see women complaining about a lot of different things about men but i think it really has to do with how they were raised i i genuinely do and me i was raised pretty well I was actually even raised fatherless. My dad died when he was young, raised by my mom. She taught me what I needed to know. And then common sense, she taught me common sense and I picked things up from there. And one of the things is you treat people how you wanna be treated, a fucking golden rule, just an easy standard. Just when you have a little bit of empathy, you know how you wanna be treated. You know you'd, what, you wouldn't want things done to you, certain bad things, and you know you shouldn't do that to other people. Pretty fucking simple, right? Pretty simple. You know, it's a concept that's lost in a lot of people, especially people that are rich, that are powerful, that have a lot of influence because they don't care about the common person. They feel like they can do whatever they want. And then they see certain things, other people getting away with certain other things, and then they emulate that type of behavior. I just won't fucking throw all men under the bus for that type of stuff, man. This is a garbage piece. And it, it's so insane, man. It's so crazy that the New York Times and, and people like that will just... Let these people write whatever the fuck they want, call it opinion paste and just, you know, just promote the hell out of it. Because you know, if I wanted to write a piece shitting on all women, throwing all women under the bus, even though I don't want to, I'm just saying as a point, obviously I would be completely rejected and I would be absolutely shat on by fucking everyone. But you hear radio silence about this stuff. Because yes, men are expendable. They, they act like men are expendable, you know, because we're really not. I'm just saying, they act like they are. And it's trash, man, contributing to fucking garbage. And to the to the type of uh, definitions that uh, a lot of feminists like to use as far as femi feminism goes, when they say it's about equality, just straight up equality, this is not fucking equality. This is about female supremacy. This is about shitting on men and then elevating women all the way up to the top. Just like that one fucking radical feminist in there. 
Or if you look at her work and things that she wants, she wants male supremacy, as she calls it, destroyed. That's what she wants to be remembered for. She wants, that's what she wants. And that's what a lot of radical feminists want. And then you're just fucking helping them by being a pussy ass bitch, dude. You are a fucking beta. You are a cuck, as we like to say now. And I do not appreciate your shit, man. Go fuck yourself. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I keep forgetting to say that I have a P.O. box. A lot of you were asking me to get a P.O. box and I finally got one. I'm going to flash it up here right now so you guys can check it out. You guys can send me whatever the hell you want, but make sure you send it as Derek Blackman. You know, Derek Blackman, don't put some black guy because they'll get confused and probably toss it out. Just Derek Blackman, send me some wacky shit. I'm going to be doing some unboxing. Some people already sent me some stuff, but I'm going to wait until I get a hell of a lot more so it can be a really thorough video. But that being said, I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank my super sexy patrons. You guys are awesome. If you guys want to become a patron, throw me a dollar. You guys can check out the links right here. Check all the links in the description below. You guys have a wonderful day, and uh, by request, Papa Bless.